morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring, to the qualifying race of 24 hours. Next to me is... Johannes Stuck for KTM. Yes, and uh, for people who are kind of related to motorsport, is your last name related to the drivers from the past? Yes, absolutely. Um, my dad actually won the first 24 hour race here, so it's kind of a family tradition to come here and to try to get the overall victory. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really awesome. So, as mentioned, for KTM, you can see behind us, the guys are actually practicing the pit stop right now. So we're gonna, it's gonna be a bit loud. We're gonna leave them in peace, but luckily we have actually Joe's car here exactly. in front or behind that we're gonna talk about. So when we started doing the series of videos about NLS or 24 hours this year, and we saw some fragments of these cars going around, always there were comments, what is this? What is that? Because people associate racing with GT cars, with Porsches, Audis, BMWs, and then they see this, and like, what is this? So it is KTM. It's KTM. But it's not the regular crossbow that you would find, that you can buy from the shop. Not exactly. yet. Not yet. I okay. heard there might be something coming. But at the end of the day, this is based on the initial monocoque. So yeah. you know the open crossbow? Yeah. It's the same monocoque, but obviously it has some variations that have come over time. And we've been racing here since 2016. We started with the GT4 spec and then the GTX and now the GT2. Mm -hmm. And this so far is the quickest car KTM has built. And we're now proud to race it here. And it's great that at the 24 hour race, we actually get the SPX class, so we're really close to the GT3s, but not quite there yet. Okay, but uh, yeah, you have a very good progress. Absolutely. So at some point, you, yeah, Rome wasn't built in one day. Exactly. So obviously development takes time. Um, you know, everybody who probably follows your channel knows Nordschleife is really unique. Yes. And there's just so many things that you have to figure out. You have high speed areas, you have mm. low speed areas, you have, you have to turn the car quickly from left to right. I mean, it's really not what you get from a typical racetrack. Yeah. So development here obviously is much more complex than if you just do a Grand Prix circuit. Yeah, absolutely. And you basically develop a complete car from ground up. Of course, the monocoque is the same, but then you go step by step and you like, you want to come close to GT3 cars and think, okay, we need more downforce. And then uh, something else needs to change and then something else and then something else and it's constant development, but it's cool. So how long have you been developing this car by now? Roughly? So the, there was an SPX prototype, which we raced already one and a half years ago in Barcelona mm -hmm. in the 24 yeah. hour race, but it didn't have the bodywork. Yeah. And it was just a five cylinder engine, you know, just to check if mm -hmm. this concept works, if we can fit the engine in the back and everything. And then one thing led to the other. And now this car, I think it did its first laps as a prototype in October last year in yeah. the free practice of the last NLS. Yeah. And then during the winter, we did some long runs. And now this is the first full season we're doing. Yeah. So let's have a quick look around it. So as mentioned, it's based on the streetcar that many people already know for over a decade by now, probably yeah. the, the open crossbow. But here's the first thing that you see is actually it has a roof. It's called a canopy. A canopy. A canopy, very <laughs> important. And I know it has two locks, left and right. Exactly. Based on the data logging that I yeah. saw on the screen. It's completely right. So we have two locks. And also inside, when the canopy closes, um, we have two LEDs that indicate that both locks are actually locked because okay. you don't want one of them to be open, obviously. Yeah. And at, you know, at the first glance, it may seem weird, but once it's closed, it's like, it doesn't matter if you close a door or a canopy, it's a closed yeah, car. And, but like, I always think uh, sometimes worst case scenario, suppose you have an impact or incident, because I see usually people help you open and close it. Can you as a driver open it by yourself? Absolutely. If you want, we can maybe have a look inside oh, yeah, just really it. quickly. So it's quite simple. Um, as you can see here, we have a small lever. Yeah. And you pull this and this opens the locks and then it's really light. You see, we can do it with one hand. You can push it up and down mm -hmm. and then it just opens. So yeah. Can you, can you demonstrate climbing sure. in? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Thank you. <laughs> Close the pockets. If not, I lose something. So you can see I'm already 35 and I still get in quite easily, so <laughs> not a problem. So yeah. let's close it. All by itself. So nice. now it's closed. And then you press and the Pull thing. the lever and I can open it. Okay. And there you go. And what we actually see is that we have so little space here in terms of everything is built around the driver. It's, there is no space for bullshit. Exactly. For random stuff. We tried to put the GoPro in Actually, it was like only one spot where we could attach a GoPro. So we're usually when we run like three GoPro setup or something yeah. for like the screen and everything, it was impossible. Yeah. So it's uh, it's really 
it's built as a race car. Absolutely. I mean, obviously there's some spatial restrictions, but we have everything we need. And I really like to have like a, a driver-centric car where mm -hmm. everything revolves around the driver. And you see more than what you actually need to see. Yeah. Who, ne who needs rear mirrors, you know? Yeah, exactly. No, nice. everything's cool. Well, let's hop out and uh, talk a bit about some other stuff. Come over here, Adrian. I want to show you some, some other stuff. Let's maybe talk about the steering wheel because uh, especially sim racers, you know, they of always course. love the steering wheel. Okay. Can we go to the settings that we have here? Absolutely. So, so let me see. Maybe we can even turn it on quickly. Gonna try to turn it on. Oh yeah, wow. Look at that. Cool. Nice. Okay. So we have basically two dashes here for us drivers. If you go into the secret menu, you can also have some more information, for, but that's relevant for the engineers only. Yeah. Obviously we have the shifting lights, which go on and yeah. then we have to shift. Um, we have the gear, which is selected, the speed. And this is the best part because you get like the fastest lap that has been done on the car will be displayed here. And then you have the Delta. And you have the Delta. Nice. And you oh. should never take your eyes off the track, but I can tell you... You're always looking. I have the uh, same. When I'm driving like a set of course or I racing, exactly. I'm like, no. You always have that in mind. <laughs> and then here, basically, you have the difference and it gives you a predicted lap time. Yeah. Um, fuel use, very important. Yeah. You're always on the edge of doing like eight laps in this configuration. So sometimes uh, when we go down to the Audi Bogen, um, we have to tell our engineer what the consumption is so that we know if we can do an eighth lap or come in for it in the seventh lap already. Okay. Traction control, ABS setting, which we can adjust here. Mm -hmm. um, this is pretty cool. We have a digital ABS, okay. which means that we're kind of pre-calculating the amount of brake pressure that can be applied. Yeah. Instead of the wheel sensor saying the wheel is stopping, we have to open again. Okay. Wow. So it's kind of predictive. And next gen. Exactly. And we've worked a lot on this. In the beginning, I didn't like it at all because yeah. I'm like an old school guy. I've been racing for a long time now. But now the setting we have is really nice. And you don't actually feel the, this pressure in the pedal. You know, when you hit ABS, yes. like, brrr, yeah, yeah. you don't have that you don't anymore. Have it. Exactly. And traction control. Yeah, who needs traction control? Maybe Sorry. if it rains. You know. <laughs> uh, we have the indicators left, right. Yeah. Here we can change the dash, yeah. which then gives us information about the tire pressures and tire temperatures. Mm -hmm. um, the regular light, very important, code, bit confusing, code 60 yeah. Yeah. is speed limiter at 120 yeah. and the pit is speed limiter at 60 kilometers 60 per hour. Actually they go to pits and actually exactly. have code 60. Yeah. Yeah. Then the radio. Yeah. If you, contact with your if you get bored on getting a uh, yeah, do you can listen. So what are they yeah. like? Wege Fem or Eins Live? Um, Bayern 3. Okay. I'm not from here. <laughs> <laughs> and then here we have the flash, yeah. which for me is the most important. I wish I had this in my road car, to be honest. <laughs> You hit it. On the exactly. <laughs> you hit it once, and it you know just flashes the the slower cars. Just gives an indication that there's a quicker car coming, which is really helpful at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. Nice. So yeah. Is, maybe you want to see. It's very ergonomic. I like it. I like I like it a lot. It's, it's you know I like that it's a hybrid of like a traditional round exactly. steering wheel and actual race car yeah. instead of like. I'm not really a fan of the, for example, like the AMG GT4, GT3, where you have just like, you know, like rectangular thing and you're yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just watched this uh, video from Jimmy Broadband. Yeah. He went to test the BMW Simric yeah. in Munich and he's like, it's not a steering wheel, it's a steering ruler because yeah. it was just a small exactly. piece of carbon. So yeah, I like this too, pretty old school. And of course, really nice shifting pedals with um, some nice haptics. I like yeah, that. Yeah, haptic feedback is very exactly. important. Yeah. Cool, so, that's, that's the nice. steering wheel, yeah. The seat, so it's, it's a Recaro, yeah, FIA seat, so I guess, is it just a standardized or do you have like something molded to you, like the inlets? So, uh, before we had the seat, which yes. is mandatory in the SPX class, we were just sitting in the monocoque okay. with uh, some foam, yeah. which was like customized. Fortunately, for my old bones, we now have a seat, which <laughs> is much more comfortable. And as you can see, we have some small padding yeah but not so much it's yeah. just the bare minimum my brother and myself were both quite tall like 187 188 okay and we barely fit in the car yeah that 190 would really be the limit uh, yeah. i think for a car driver nice well let's move to the back to the most interesting part for the horsepower gigs five cylinder engine the one that you can find in audi rs3 i guess exactly 
but with a bit more horsepower. Yes, um, so I'm not sure how much horsepower we could run. Because it depends on BOP. We and have the BOP and the BOP or balance of performance where the cars are kind of balanced. We are running 525 horsepower and 1,300 kilos, which is like the power Almost to weight wanted, ratio, yeah. which, which is required. That's good. Yeah. So uh, I think everybody agrees you never have enough power. True. So you have enough you have enough power for one or two laps. Exactly. After that, you get used to it and it gets more and you need more. <laughs> so I mean that's always the issue, I guess. But you know it. Yeah. But still, even with uh, 500-ish horsepower, you're keeping up almost with GT3s. You're doing. I saw yesterday in the qualifying, it was like slightly above eight minutes that you're doing for a 24-hour configuration. Yeah, it was, it was actually Tim um, from the other car who did a really, really crazy lap time. Yeah. Um, I'm still going to have to look at the data to figure out where exactly he got those one, two seconds. Yeah. Um, but I think like in a, in a clean lap, we're three to four seconds off GT3s, yeah. which is intended, I guess. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's really good. So we've done a, a major step here and I'm, I'm really happy to be part of this. It's nice. Cool. The last couple of nerdy questions for people who are like really into track specs. The brakes, I see you run a piece. Yep. So it's custom made for a KTM. Yep. Um, then uh, suspension, what is it actually? Is it uh, like? It's H and R. H and R. Yep. Okay. And the tires? Tires, Michelin. obviously, confidential tires. Confidential tires, the same as you can find in GT3s. It's the only thing you can actually run if you want to be competitive. Exactly. Um, you need those. Basically everything you see on this car is somewhat custom. Yeah. There's nothing you can fit into a car like this just from stock. So yeah. a lot of brain work engineering, KTM, rider engineering, uh, who've done a great job. Also putting this car together in such a short amount of time. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's awesome. really fantastic to see how you know the whole team is motivated to for this one goal to get the best out of the 24 hour race. And I just loving love being part of I can imagine. Like this, yeah, it's absolutely. really cool because uh, I mean I've been like kind of from a corner of my eye following you and the car, and now over this weekend I got a bit closer, and it's really see uh, like this whole family yeah. feeling that you have here, absolutely. and everyone like the car stands out, you as a team stand out, and everyone wants to know what this is, and hopefully now thanks to Joe and this video and his team, you found out what this is and get you excited to follow him, follow the team, follow cheer for them for 24 hours. Yes, please. Yeah, you're, you're going to be here for 24, right? Yes, of course. Oh, OK, yeah. stupid, silly question. Of course. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't miss that. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm very much excited to follow you. And uh, yeah, good luck for the, because by now, in about an hour time, you should be getting in the car and do the first qualifying race. Uh, exactly. My brother will do the start. Yeah. He's, he's always done the start. So you see, we're like teamed up since a long time. We know who does what. Yeah. And then probably I'll go in the car either for the second or the third stint. And um, yeah, I'm really hyped. Cool. And yeah. then uh, we can have some night action. Glowing great Absolutely. Discs. I hope to see that too. Yeah. Well, we're, we're going to get you some. must watch. Um, yeah, yeah. Where should we go to film you? OK, wait. So the car lifts off a lot on Flansgarten. Yeah, that's where Adrian is going to go. He's yeah. already having a smiling face. Yeah. And um, Flansgarten 2 or 1? Uh, one. Uh, okay, so just yeah, the first exactly. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know we have this rear view camera. Yeah. Okay, and let me show you where it's actually positioned. It's right here. So when the sun sets, and you, I look in my rear view camera. Yeah. I see this long blue flame. Nice. So there might be a good chance if it gets dark enough, if you get some high speed um, shots, that you see a nice, uh, how do you say, foxtail, a blue yeah. foxtail. From so should go like somewhere in Kesselshin or you I think that would yeah. be pretty cool. Yeah, you should. You should yeah, try we should it try out. to aim that. Okay, we'll definitely do that. So hopefully, flaming action now and also on board. <laughs>